Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. I made a small modification here where I've just added logic to eliminate any duplicates because uh, everything has been converted to lowercase, so lowercase and uppercase will become the same. And this logic basically will remove any duplicates or should remove any duplicates anyway. So I just basically added a, another list, which is unique list. I iterate over the length of the txt dumb valid, which has been initialized to all, the very, to all the strings. And that I basically am asking if the unique list, which is empty, uh, if it contains this one. Uh, if it does contain, go ahead and continue and do nothing. Else, if it does not contain, please add uh, this string to this array list. And then just go ahead and return it. So down below in the code, I've just added uh, valid DOM and I've added an extra parentheses here and here. And then I've added a valid DOM here and parentheses here and here. So let's just go ahead and run this code now. And there we go, voila. So you have the list of domains which are by one bit different. So all of them with all of the, ex even if the extension is different by one, go ahead and put it there. There are a lot of valid extensions and I didn't go through the process of uh, stating which extensions are valid and which ones are not because there are really a lot of valid extensions out there aside from .com. I will show you this uh, fairly shortly. So there you go. You run the function and you get a list of domains which you can use to query the servers and to basically see whether they are available or not. So we get out of the third function and the fourth function is basically just, uh, it converts from binary to text. That's all it does. We have called it before. Uh, no big deal. I have already shown this to you. So let's just go ahead and close this. And the fifth function, which is the final function in the line here, is the basically checks if the domain is available or not. Now, this is not 100% available or not. This is, uh, as you can see, um, might be available since we could get no info on the registration of the domain, uh, might be available. So then we can take those domains which state which are stated to be might be available, which are labeled as might be available, and we can check them online where we actually, if we want to register them. Anyway, let's go ahead and go over the final function and let's see how this works. <clears throat> so we get an array list of type string match and we basically just go ahead and declare it here. And then we add uh, strings to it. Strings is basically not found, no match for, not fo, uh, not found basically. No data of fou, not data found, has been registered, has not been registered, no entries, and not available. You might notice that I didn't type it in all the way because there is really no need. And these are all the keywords that we will be looking uh, in the responses of the, uh, these are all the basic, basic, let me just go ahead and bring you the terminal so that you can actually see what's going on here. If I type in who is admin .com, I'm going to get a reply like this. And if this is not registered or something like that, I'm going to get either not found or not registered or something like that, or one of these strings. I'm likely to get one of these strings. If I don't get any of those strings, it might actually be available, okay? So we are using the who, who is client for this purpose. By the way, uh, this is me querying one server, but I can also do exact match and then dash dash u and then server you are I can type in the server URL equals is the exact match for this domain that's what I'm going to be using so we're using basically the who is client the same one that's being used in bash pretty much and 
then once I have those strings, which I wish to look for, I go ahead and create a map type. So map type consists, this is like a map type of type, uh, which contains string string. Uh, one is the key and the other one is a value. Values are found through keys. In this case, both the key and the value are strings. And then I type in SRV list, and this is how I basically declare the map type. Create an array list down below. I just go ahead and declare it. It's going to be a string. And then I go into sets of four loops. Now, uh, you have these two lines here, which are basically, okay, let me just go ahead and expand this, which are basically just uh, reading from this file and this file. You will need to create these files. Let me just go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, so first of all, go into slash home, your user, and type in mkdir, who is SRV, and it says that the file already exists for me, but for you, it will be created. Go into this file, who is SRV, go into this directory, I can do ls, it will be empty for you. For me, there are two files, if I type in cat x, this is going to give me a list of possible extensions. You can see there's, a, there's really a lot of them. Dot, uh, .com is somewhere in here. Let me see if I can find it. I don't feel like repping it. There we go. So com is here, but you also get a lot of the other ones. And uh, if I cat the other one, no extension list, this is basically a list of uh, who is server URLs. So there are there's a there's a good amount of them. You need to go to this website, and I'm gonna go ahead and show it. Let me just go ahead and open up here, right? Okay, so this is the URL which you need to visit in order to get uh, a list of the who is servers. If you just oh sorry, if you just scroll down, you will see that there is a that there are pairs of uh, extensions and who is servers. So as the you have a you have a really good explanation here. I mean, it is rather simple. So the structure of a file is very simple. The file down it's referring to the file down below. Uh, each line contains the domain extension. So this is the domain extension. And uh, a single space character. So space is in between. This is very important for grepping. And then the who is server address, which is basically here. So same format is followed down below. If you just go ahead and copy all of this, so just select everything from top to the bottom. Okay, there we go. And you just press Control C to copy it. Uh, nope. Uh, nope. Let me see which one am I using. I'm just looking for the... There we go. So I can go ahead and just... Uh, thought, right. VIM TMP. And I can press I for insert and Control Shift V to paste all of this in and then press escape colon wq to write and quit <coughs> and I can type in cat tmp and it's going to print out all of this onto the screen and then I can pass this to awk and the default file delimiter is space so this will be the first field and this will be the second field and I can type in I can go ahead and do this so print uh, first And press enter. So this is going to give me a list of these extensions. And if I uh, print two, this is going to give me a list of the servers. So just go ahead and create the same files, same fi uh, files with the same names as I have. Uh, you see the first file name is ext server list, and the other one is no ext who is. Or you, we can create them with touch and then just type in the name of the file, so ext, srv, 
list and press enter and that's going to go ahead and create it. Then what you can do is into the extension server list, so extsrv list as you can see from above, you can just go ahead and use the first field and do this and then extsrv list. So let me just see if that's the one. Yep. So you can just go ahead and use this command now press enter and this is going to output all of the extensions into this file. Now the next up you can use the no, no ext who is list and you can do number two here and this is going to output everything in, and your no, XT, no ext who is list will look like this. Make sure to type in pwd to see the path to these files which you will copy here and then you will type in the file name. So we're just creating uh, two file handlers, so to say, uh, two objects for files, so we can control those files through those objects. Anyway, uh, we have two strings here, so line 00 and line 01, in which we will store the, which we will use in combination with br00 and br01, so with buffered readers for the files. And then we shall go into the wonderful land of the wonderful while loop. Here it says line 00, zero equals, so we are assigning the output value of br00.readline, meaning that we are reading effectively from this file one, li one line at a time and we are assigning to line 00. zero. So each time we are overwriting the value of line 00. zero. And we're basically stating as long as it is not equal to null, so once we reach the end of the file, it's going to be equal to null. And whilst we can read from the other file, which contains the extension list, they're both of the same, of the, they both contain the same number of lines. Uh, so as long as line 01 is also not equal to null, so as long as we do not reach the end of the file here, go ahead and uh, use the SRV list, which is the map, and put line 00 and line 01. So put the domain extension and put the domain itself. So the domain extension will be the key for the value, which is the domain of the whois server. Close the files upon finishing. Always a good practice. And then down below, once we have once we have populated our map with all the extensions and with all the domains from the whois servers, we're basically creating another string, which is the URL SRV, which we are, uh, that's just an, another array list and a steer string EXT, which is the extension. And now we're going to create one for loop. These are just the, these are just my naming conventions for the iterators. So when I have a lot of them, I tend to name them I underscore zero zero, I underscore zero one, and so on and so forth. So I don't have to keep on changing the letters. Anyway, it says here equals to zero, okay, iterate over the entire size of the domain, so DOMS, which has been passed. Okay, which has been passed here, right? And not only that, not, just go ahead and iterate over it, and then go into the second for loop and iterate over the, over the size of the string which is contained at, pos at this position, basically. So I have this position within the array list. This position contains a string, get the length of the string and that will be your iteration that will be your that will be the the span of the inter, of the iteration and then you go into the if statement <coughs> down below which basically states that doms.get and you have i underscore zero one and then dot char at so what we're basically doing is uh, taking a string from the array list and we're specifying and we are asking is the character at this position equal is it the same as this character dot in case that it is in case that the dot is at that exact position go ahead and perform the following so use the ext string which we have created before and set it equal to uh, doms get, so we're getting a string, and then we're getting a substring. Substring is basically, go ahead, go to this position, uh, begin from this position, so j underscore zero zero plus one, and 
fetch us the variable and go all the way to the end. So go from go from the dot, so skip the dot, so the, hence the plus one, and go all the way to the end, no matter what else is there, and add that to the ext, and we shall use that as our extension. So we are creating a list, a separate, we're creating a separate, uh, separate placeholder for the extensions, which is basically the dot .com, dot .net, dot .org, etc. Except these are not going to be dots, it's going to be just org, com, etc. And down below it's url srv dot add, so the URLs of the server, and we're going to go ahead and add, we're going to go to the SRV list, which is our uh, which is our map type, and we are going to use get, and we're going to pass a key to it, and with that key, we're going to fetch all the servers from the map, which are basically responsible for a certain extension. So if you want to check the .com, you won't query every single server in the list. That would be a complete waste of time. You're just going to query those servers which hold responses for the .com domains, and that is why this loop is needed. Okay, once you've done that, just go ahead and break away from this for loop, go to the next iteration and repeat the for loop for the next string. Excellent. So now that we have populated our URL SRV array list, we need to go ahead and just remove the duplicates. And here I have done it in a bit of a strange way. I don't know why. I felt inspirational or stupid at the time, but for whatever reason, I have used this logic to remove the duplicates. If you want to laugh, feel free. I just don't feel like changing it later because I was too lazy. Anyway, it says here, URL uh, SRV remove all. So all, the, what, all what this line does is remove all the nulls, all the empty places from the array list that is necessary to do. If you don't do that, you're going to get an exception. And then we're going to sort it out. So all the same, all the same URLs will be right next to each other. And then we're going to go ahead and remove all those, all the repeat, all the. If there is more than one repeatance of a URL within the array list, go ahead and remove it. So we are iterating over the size of the URL SRV list. We're going through the full length, and we're basically saying if if this contain if the URL SRV unique contains URL SRV dot get some string some URL if it is already contained uh, well this is asking if it contains a, if it contains a certain URL and this is negating it so if this if this evaluates to if this evaluates to true this will this exclamation mark will negate it and this will become false. But if this if this is oops, if this is basically false and the exclamation mark negates it, this will become true and this will execute. So then what's gonna happen is that the URL SRV unique, uh, we will go ahead and add to it the URL SRV dot get at a particular position, and that string will be added to the uh, array list which contains the unique URLs. If you were confused by the explanation, you are confused with full right because I have no idea why I've done it. So you can apply the logic which I've explained a moment ago for basically sorting out the unique uh, strings. But this part is not really that important anyway. And since we're in the try catch block, you can see that the try block began here. Uh, we need to basically get an exception print out an ex and print out an exception if it does occur. Why do we need a try catch block? Well, first of all, we don't know whether these files are readable or not. So if it fails to read, we definitely want it to basically tell us, hey, I failed to read the file and not just to go through the program and we have no idea what is going on. So that's why we need a try catch block. Attempt to do something. If you fail, go ahead and catch the exception and then throw it back at me so I can know what it is. Okay, we're going to get into the second portion of this function in the follow-up because, well, time and things.